Good afternoon all Biafrans all over the world and all lovers of freedom and all friends of Biafra. I bring greetings to you from Enugu where I am transmitting from right now. Um, my name is Emeka MK Siri. I am the solicitor for the Biafrans who believe in the legal methodology. Um, I'm the chairman of the IPOP customary government under the elders. Um, I bring you greetings and I want to give you updates and also to advise those who believe in our, in our methodology as well as those who will eventually believe because it's like we are preaching the gospel to win souls. Um, we have heard, or you have heard, that it's only a madman that continues to do one thing over and over and over and expect to get a different result. Doing one thing over, in the same way, over and over, in the same way, year by year, in the same way, and you think you get a different result. No, it's only a madman that does that. Now, the Biafran independence movement the struggle has been um, going on for the past 20 years. If it was activated by uh, brother Ralph Wazrike in 1999. I remember when he came to Aba, then my chambers were at Aba, my, I had my office at Aba, at, at one of Kigwe Road. He came to, to Fox Road, I think. Is it 175 Fox Road there about where he went and uh, hoisted the Biafran flag? Well, from that time he 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 started the movement and awareness was created. I give him credit, Wazike. I give you credit for starting that move. Yes, Wazike and his boys and his members started the modern Biafra agitation. So we must give respect to him for that. Like I have told you, every person plays his part. You now pass on the ball to the next person. The next, next person passes the ball to the next. All of us are moving towards one goal to achieve our goal. So I know that um, uh, Masob also split into factions and uh, some left him. Even Namdekal was his disciple who also took the awareness uh, a campaign for that and they did wonderful work by by creating more awareness so and all that people also those in the overseas who have created much awareness yes you have created awareness but after creating awareness what next that is the question if you sit at home for 1000 years you will not get Biafra if you keep marching on the road for 1,000 years, you will not get Biafra. There are, there are things to be done to get Biafra. Not just doing the same thing over and over and over, the same method. No. We have gone to another level. We need to be, you see, for you to get independence, listen very well. You must engage the authorities face to face either in the battlefield or in the national assembly and debate it or in a judicial tribunal like a court and debate it and argue it these are three ways either you meet in the battlefield and and fight each other face to face or you meet in the National Assembly and debate it until you win and it will be passed into law, granting you your freedom. Or you meet each other in the court and argue with and the court will make an order compelling them to pass the law or make go for you so you can go. You must meet your opponent face to face. There must be an encounter. Running around the streets, carrying placards or protesting on the street, you're only creating awareness. You have not engaged your opponent face to face to argue with him. So, 
Now we have chosen the, this option of bringing the Federal Republic of Nigeria to court, bringing Attorney General to court, bringing General Olusegun Obasanjo to court, bringing General Yakub Gowan to court, and face to face we argue, let them bring their defense. So what we are saying now is, let us work co together in cooperation. All those people who have helped in creating awareness, we give you credit for what you have done. You have done wonderful works. Then we want you also now to support our method, what we are doing now. Tell the whole world, use your media and advertise it. That Biafrans have dragged Nigeria to court, dragged Olusegun Obasanjo to court, dragged Yakubu Gowan to court, to come and explain, to come and defend themselves over serious allegations heaped on their heads. The issue of Biafra and Nigeria cannot be swept under, under the carpet. Yes, since after the war, successive governments have tried to hide the thing, sweep it under the carpet. But that is not how to solve a problem. There is a problem between Nigeria and the remnants of Biafra land. There is a problem. And we need to sit down to talk it over and agree and negotiate and settle this problem. Otherwise, it will not go away. In 2002, Justice Oputa, JS, as he then was, said, he said, and I quote, time does not heal the truth. Time does not heal, does not heal wound, injury. Time does not heal wound or injury. Time does not heal injustice. Only truth can heal injustice. Time does not heal injustice. Time does not heal injustice. Only truth can heal injustice. So when you think that over time, over time, we shall forget, we will not forget. So the earlier we, we, we face the problem and solve it, the better. Because I keep wondering, you, you, you say you sweep it over. That is why you removed history from the, from, the, from the curriculum, academic curriculum in Nigeria. There's no more history. In the days where we went to school, where there was history. You know, there was civics. These subjects. But now, the Nigerian government removed history from the academic curriculum. Why? So that people will not know what happened in the past. You are wasting your time. We have written all the books. All these books will tell all the history. So many books have been written to tell the history of what happened. So, don't, why are you hiding it? Is it not better to expose ourselves to, so we can learn the lessons of history and stop repeating the wrongs? If you hide it, you will make the mistake again. So, it is better we face the facts. It's better we, 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 we exhume those evils that are being covered and treat them because we are still angry. The Biafrans are still angry. There's no, we, we, we will not hide it. Every Biafran, even those that are secret, those that are uh, that pretend not to love it. They all love Biafra. Listen, I want to let you know. All people, all indigenous of Biafra land, they love, all of them love Biafra. Some are afraid to speak out because of the, the way, the, the place they find themselves. Some are, some have compromised, some have put themselves in certain things and they are, they are either their hands are tied or their mouths are shut or something that has uh, uh, clipped their wings. So they find it difficult to express themselves. But some of us, oh, what are we, why are we afraid? We're not afraid now because I'm not in the payroll of the government. I'm not their contractor. I don't seek contract from government. So what, I, what can you do? My clients are private clients. 
it's even uh, so it, so what am i losing so it is because there are certain people if they speak out they they they'll stop getting contracts and favors from the government so for that they will not speak out they keep quiet but they are happy with what we are doing they are happy they are all their friends they are happy so now i don't blame you i will not ask you to come out in the open I want you to continue the way you are doing, but be a Nicodemus Biafran. You know a Nicodemus who goes in the night. By night he goes to Jesus Christ. But by the day he comes out and joins the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they begin to argue. But in the night he goes to join Jesus Christ. So I want you to be a Nicodemus Biafran. We welcome Nicodemus Biafrans. Play that role for us. In secret support us. Finance us, encourage us in secret, but in the open, just pretend that you are not, but we know you are. So, play your role. We are not angry with you. We understand you have put yourself in certain problems, maybe because of conditions. The Igbo man says, uh, a condition make crawfish bend. So, maybe that condition make crawfish bend that way. So, we understand you. So, but we want you to be part of what we are doing. So I go back to the, the, what I said. It's only a madman that does one thing with one method over and over years, year by year, and expect a different result. He's a madman. So now we have, brought, we have come to another level of Biafran struggle. We have engaged Nigeria. We have engaged other world powers. We have, had, we have also had meetings with other governments of other countries. In fact, Australia was the first government that invited us to sit down with them and talk about Biafra. So we have had meetings. We submitted a memorandum to the British government for a permanent solution for this Biafra-Nigerian issue. And the British government accepted our memorandum, welcomed our memorandum. So. There's a way to solve this problem peacefully, and every person will be happy. It's, we don't want bloodshed. We don't want that. But if you want that, whatever you cause, you will, you will carry it on your head, because whatsoever a man sows, he will reap it. Because we are warning you, let us follow the pathway of peace, peaceful resolution of this thing. If you refuse, listen. Have you not heard that those who make change impossible, inevitable, they, they will make violence inevitable? If you make, if you make peaceful change impossible, then violent change becomes necessary. You will not trigger off violent change. If you refuse peaceful change, you will trigger off the kind of cataclysm, social cataclysm you cannot control that will destabilize everybody. And it is an ill wind that blows no good to anyone. That's why we keep warning you. We are lawyers. We are lawyers. We believe in the rule of law. We believe in order, law and order. This can be resolved lawfully if you cooperate. We want every person to cooperate. Nigerian government, cooperate. Don't throw us away and say, hey, Biafrans, who are the Biafrans? You throw us away. You, can, you cannot. Because our children will continue crying. If the, court, the case we are in court now, we are in court. If you handle it anyhow, of course, we will continue fighting it. And there is no peace until there is peace. There cannot be peace until there is peace. So, the earlier we sat down and, 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 and negotiate and settle this thing, the better for every one of us. Therefore, I call upon Biafrans and Nigerians. Well, the way I say Biafrans and Nigerians, let me qualify it. All Biafrans are Nigerians by citizenship. Because we were forced to become Nigerians against our will. Yes. We didn't want to be Nigerians. We don't want to be Nigerians. We don't want to be Nigerians. But they forced us to become Nigerians. And we have accepted to become Nigerians. So we are now Nigerians.
by citizenship. But we are still Biafras by indigenous identity. Now, I am saying all the Biafras who are Nigerians, of course, and all Nigerians who are not Biafras will want cooperation from both sides. We want cooperation from both sides. And people say they want to be free. What is wrong with that? And they have even said, okay, we want to be free within Nigeria. What is wrong with that? That is the first step. So we want cooperation. Yes. We want cooperation from all people. And the Biafrans in, in particular, we don't want you to continue to fight against one another. We want you to cooperate with your elders. We want you to respect your elders. Like I said before in the previous broadcast, we, the IPOB of the elders, the IPOB customary government, the elders IPOB, the original IPOB, we are under the elders. We are an affiliate of Ohanes and Ibo. We support Ohanes and Ibo. The President General Ohanes and Ibo, Chief John Nyawodo, we support him and we work with him. There's nothing to fear about it. He has identified himself with us. He has attended our program in the open. Every person saw him. He is the first, the first Ohaneze President General that has attended Biafra program, which we held. He came there and made a speech. When movement of Biafras in Nigeria mobbing organized the program, I invited him. He was there. And he spoke in the open to the whole world. He is in support of what we are doing. In fact, he said it clearly that he is in support of our method. Because our method is the intellectual method, the legal method, the diplomatic method. It is the legal and political diplomacy we are using. And he is very happy with it. And all the elders are happy with our method. So those that are happy with our method, identify ourselves and join us. But if you are not happy with our methods, you can still follow any other method you want. But there's something I have said. Those of you who say you want the, the fighting type, the, the Jin Jin Grigri type, fine. There is, there is uh, the security outfit. If the governors will uh, agree, will listen to me as I have pleaded with them, to send the executive bills to the houses of assembly and pass the Security bills, bills into law, creating our security outfit, Ndinche, Ndinche, and arm you very well, arms and ammunition, arm you very well. Then you can now have the uh, opportunity to showcase that your strength in fighting crime. You can fight crime, fight crime. The government is in support of fighting crime. You can fight criminals, fight terrorists, you can fight. So there is legitimate violence. There is legitimate violence when you become our security men to, call, to protect our territory and fight the terrorists. Gun them down, gun them down. The government, will, the states will arm you very well and you move into the forest. I have heard that the terrorists are now occupying our forest. That's what I have heard. Then we will arm you. You go into the forest and fight the terrorists. Gun them down, burn them up. Go, uh, go ahead. That is legitimate war. You are fighting to protect the territory against terrorists. So, if that is what you want, fine. That's a way to do the legitimate type. Not gra 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 insulting every person, abusing every person, and destroying every. No, 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 no. Threatening to kill this person and threatening to assassinate this person and in, uh, uh, you know. To say this elder is a criminal, elder is a saboteur, or Hanez and Dibo, you call them Oha, you call them Hanez and Doshi. What nonsense is that? Are you mad? Don't you have respect for your elders? Just look at the north and the west. Do they, do they abuse their elders? They don't. But it is in Biafra land, in Igbo land, that you abuse your elders and you think you will be free. You are bringing curses upon your head for abusing your elders. You don't know that. You don't know there is a spiritual law you are breaking by abusing your elders and you are invoking causes upon your head. And when things begin to happen to you, you don't know what caused it. You don't know. You don't know. You have been deceived by whoever has deceived you. Better run out, save your head. You better save your head from the deceivers who have deceived you. 
you must respect your elders that your days may be long that you may be blessed listen and take heed and live long take heed and live long we shall get to where we are going with our elders behind us with the blessings of our elders the blessings of our land the blessings of god of our land all they will bless us when you are walking in righteousness all will be with you when you are walking in righteousness when you are walking in righteousness heaven and earth will be with you all all elements will be with you when you speak things they will happen when you walk there is boldness on your face enemies will see your face and tremble because there is boldness there is righteousness there is there's fire of holiness and power over you and they will be afraid of you because you are walking in righteousness so I want you to follow us in this way and it shall be well with you we don't want spilling of blood anymore I have told you if you go and cause troubles and you die your head is not more than the 3 million or 3.5 million we have already lost so your head does not count again even if you go and die again for Biafra we have died enough we have died enough we have died enough we have sacrificed enough blood it's, it's foolishness again to go and start dying and dying and dying and killing each other because of Biafra. Why don't you be reasonable so that we can get what we are looking for peacefully, diplomatically, politically, legally. We shall get it. And now we have cornered Nigeria. Nigeria is now in a corner. It's in the entire corner. It's very difficult for Nigeria to escape now. We must be free and we must be free indeed. Thank you for listening to me. God bless you. Bye.